better than all this other similar crap. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for a review of everyone's favorite fake outrage film. It is a deeply unpleasant movie. You'll walk away depressed, wondering if there's any good left in the world. Joker's laughing a lot and um, not in a in a fun way. Not in a, in a fun way. Make no mistake, neither the fictional character Joker nor the film is an endorsement of real world violence of any kind, but certainly making a lot of parents, I think, nervous about letting their kids go see this movie. I am Groot. Given uh, what it could inspire. I just think this film's coming out at the wrong time in our current political climate. You know what happened when I saw this film? Nothing, because it's a fucking movie. Fucking telephone. I sat my ass down in a semi-comfortable seat, and I enjoyed a surprisingly decent film. One might say it's the best comic book film since Logan. Is that saying much? No, not really, but still, it was pretty good. This is the kind of movie where if you don't give it either a 10 or a 1, someone's gonna complain about it for some stupid fucking reason. So yeah, if you think that this film is the next taxi driver and you want me to give it a 10 and proclaim it's the best film of the decade, then... no. I don't know what else to say, like, really? Like, what? Well, I'm not gonna fucking lie to you, it was good. It's better than all this other similar crap. I don't even know where to start with this film. I guess I'll just start with my positives, then go to the negatives, then maybe some spoilers. Who knows? So let's get into it. One of the best things about this film is that it actually feels like a film made by a director with a vision, and not a committee of interchangeable hacks for hire who are just bending to the whims of some secret ghost director producer. Visually, the film's pretty good. It didn't really blow me away in terms of framing, but in terms of color grading and lighting, it looks pretty, uh, pretty damn good. Everyone's favorite clickbait question right now is, uh, Is Joaquin Phoenix better than Heath Ledger? I can answer that question right now. New. That being said, no reason to downplay his performance just because it's not better than one of the best performances of all time. Joaquin Phoenix does a pretty damn good job. He's easily the second best Joker by a mile. He also gave a unique new spin to the character without desperately coming across as, quotes, edgy. All of that chit chat's gonna get you hurt. Oh my god. I can tell you meant that. <laughs> this film is also really well paced. I honestly can't think of a single second of it that dragged. My favorite quality about the film is probably just how fucking bold it is at times. It's fairly unexpected at a lot of points. 99% of other films wouldn't do some of the things that this film does. If you've seen the film, then yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyways, I'll discuss more positives in the spoiler section, but for now, it's time to get in to some negatives and piss off every single fanboy on the planet. The first half of the film started out kind of rocky for me. There were plenty of moments that came across as pretty unintentionally cheesy. If this moment didn't bother you in the trailer, then it probably won't bother you in the movie. But it, play it came out off really, really dumb in the film to me. Mainly because a lot of characters in this film don't actually act like real human beings in any way. Just felt a little forced, and plus this part has just become such a meme at this point, it was hard to take seriously. Also, no spoilers yet, but if you consider the title card of the film a spoiler, the title card of the, <laughs> the film is really fucking cheap and crappy looking. It looked like some crappy font that I'd use for a thumbnail, and maybe it was just my theater, but I swear, in my theater, the sides of the letters were kind of cut off. So I would certainly hope that that was just a projection issue, because if somebody let that slip past, it looked not good. It's, um, it's not good. 
sticking with the first half still, it just kind of lacked subtlety, I guess. It really often just kind of felt like, this is a script. We need to insert these elements to show you that, oh look, that's the moment that led to his mental breakdown, and it's really overt, and it's not subtle in the way that a film like Taxi Driver is. One might say a lot of these moments were on the nose. Like, there was just a lot of dumb shit in the first half, like when his boss calls him up on the dingy payphone and is like, You're fucking fired. There were also some elements with Thomas Wayne and his neighbor where I feel like you could almost remove them and it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but I'm sure most fans liked all the little tie-ins with the Batman universe. I liked all the little tie-ins with the Batman universe. Motherfucker! Batman universe. A as both a comic book film and a movie, I thought it was a masterpiece. If you I think that's it's a masterpiece, what is Citizen Kane? It's great. But it's very, in it was inexpensive. Tie-ins with the Batman universe? Who gives a shit? Also, it's a smaller nitpick in the scene where he goes into the theater playing the Charlie Chaplin movie. When the audience is laughing, it sounds like complete stock. Everyone's in just complete unison. It sounds really unnatural. <laughs> Anyways, that's about it. I know I said I was gonna do a spoiler section, but I think I'll skip on that, mostly just because if you've seen the film already, you already know the moments I'm hinting at. Secondly, if you haven't seen the film, I would recommend it, and I don't want people being tempted to listen to spoilers and ruining the film. Go check it out, people. Go throw your money at this thing so we can get more films like this and less crap like this. Given this a solid 7 out of 10. Dun, 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 dun. Anyways, Go check it out. I don't give anything above a six unless I think it's worth watching multiple times. So yeah, it's good stuff. Check it out. Speaking of good stuff, Martin Scorsese also just shat all over the MCU this weekend. So that was pretty fucking great. One of my favorite parts of the quote is when he says, Actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, <laughs> implying that the scripts are just complete fucking shit. Which, yeah, pretty much. Famous. It was pretty hilarious. James Gunn was crying on Twitter. All the MCU fanboys were going completely rabid. They were all like, Oh, oh he's just jealous. Yeah, um, the man who made Goodfellas is jealous of the company that put out classics such as Thor the Dark World. Ant-Man and the Wasp. About family, about fun, about emotion. Our fans went through a lot recently in a movie called Infinity War. And the whole notion to have a breath of fresh air and to have some fun, fun, a breath of fun, family, fun. Captain Marvel. <laughs> no one talks about these films a year after they come out. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Make sure to hit that like button to drive this epic video through YouTube's algorithm. Make sure to comment your thoughts on the film and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching!